Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button, and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 124 of the Virtual Stone Carver Apprenticeship. All right, I'm gonna pull the camera and show you a couple things. Um, I'm only into my second point now with the reconfigured, the, re, the different approach to the triangle. Same triangle, you know, nothing's changed. I'm just working from the different corner. Uh, and this was, we talked about this earlier. Um, these triangles all have the same angle. I've talked about it, you know, with my wife and we were discussing it and explaining it to her. And when we're doing this, we're working with congruent triangles, okay? And if you, if you understand what congruent means, if you don't, uh, congruent means that they've got the same angles in the triangle. And we're just creating a little isosceles triangle to find our long measurement, whether we're working from the top or whether we're working from the other side. The angles are all the same, it's just the length of the sides are different. So that, if that helps, people understand great. But I want to show you a couple of things. This is working fine, you know, there's no difference in the way it points, but I want to show you one of the benefits of doing it this way that I just really didn't think of it. I think it's going to help me from being as confused, at least for this one one job, you know, where the board, then the board will be all marked up and I'll have to, you know, get out some of my moldy money and buy another board. Check this out. on the triangle. The fan's starting to die again. When these new strikes are swung, I can swipe it to, to calculate my new measurement, and then when I capture it, I can swing the compass vertical to make an X right there. And that probably will help me See, here's another one. See how nice that looks? That's easy to read. Okay, that is like brain dead easy to read. And that'll help me if I swipe. Just say, for instance, I swipe right beside here. I'm going to be able to easier recognize that I've already swiped that one. Now, we may have some lines that are right on top of that that'll be complicated. But I think this is going to help speed it up. I, I like it better because I don't have to juggle the compasses as much as I do when I'm up here and I'm trying to find one spot and put it in and hold it and then find the other spot and then loosen and adjust it. We'll see. I think this is going to work a lot better. Back to point. Now as I'm shooting points, this is just a good habit to get into. When I first set this up and we're close, you know, I take my compass put it in the hole and I'll mark my swipes approximately with a pencil okay it's you're, you know you got to check everything as you go and if you're this is a, a big exercise in double checking and triple checking and checking it again but you should swipe them initially and you sh they shouldn't be you know, if you take and swing this, and this 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 dimension and that dimension overlap, well, something's wrong. You got to be able to look at that real fast and figure it out. So we're just moving up. But see, this is super close to the top. This is even closer than this point. And so we got this placed really, really well to have her right at the very front. And this cuff and her wrist, the top of her wrist should be right on the face of the stone. It'll be just a little bit higher than this. And so we've got her wrist, and then we can have the tip of her forehead justified with the face of the die. And, and everything should come into come into uh, the proper placement really easily. So you just have to keep checking this. And and you get, you know, the more you do it, I'm, and I'm, I'm loving this striking the triangle, striking that bottom again, putting an extra swipe so I've got an X so I know where, I, where I've been. It makes it a lot easier. So, because uh, theoretically, you won't have any stray marks on there. Everything will be an X, and the only one that's not an X is what you just swipe. So, we'll have, well, I'm sure we'll have duplicate dimensions, but we'll deal with that. Just keep going. I 
mentioned this before, I want to go over this one more time just to help keep your mind straight. And I want to show you from up here first, okay, uh, before I go into these lines. We talk about things being in plane, okay? You've got, just say for instance that my wrist is a foundation point and my wrist is a foundation point and the target point is here in the middle. When we swing down, and we swing down, okay, that's not ideal. What we want is we want one to be like this, and one to be like this, because we swing this one, this one isn't gonna travel laterally as much. And the longer this distance is, the less it's gonna travel. The shorter this one is, the faster it's gonna travel just in general, just say for instance that it was here and these swing down, this travels forward a lot faster than this does. But if you put it down at a, at a lower level, it travels even further, even faster. And so as you look at your points, I understand that this long point that's going down to the joint, down by the, on the plinth, way down, this is long and it's and it's very flat, okay? This swipe isn't gonna really go anywhere. It's just gonna move a little bit. If anything, because this is already on the, on the same plane, same flat surface, whatever, and we're swinging, this is at the maximum distance. It isn't approaching it, it's, it's already there. And so if anything, this line is gonna go away from the intersection, okay? From the other two lines. Now. Both of this this swing right here is like, oh boy, I bet that's a quarter. It wouldn't surprise me. It's at least, it's, it's around a quarter of how long that is. So this one's gonna travel more quickly in general, but it's also way up here. So in order for this to, to flatten out, it's gonna have to go that way a lot. And so this line is gonna advance a lot. Same thing with this one here on the end. You see, this is probably half that distance. It's a little bit more than this one. But that means that this swipe and this swipe are going to travel a lot. And this one isn't. And so you'll see this as you start doing this, and it'll just, it'll, this is part of what I talk about when you just start swinging the compasses and you just go away. Because everything makes sense. Because you're going and you're going, oh, wait a minute, that's wrong. Because you can tell that this, this line isn't moving the way it should be. And you will become so cognizant of it. You'll just become aware of it to the point that you can read it really well. And you'll say, this doesn't make any sense. And you'll be able to see them and how they work and where they work. And the more you do it, you know, and if you get away from it for, you know, a year or two, it's, it's rusty. You know, it is. So... Um, I had pointed in with a compass for, it's been a while. Um, we just, it's, it's so hard to sell big jobs like this. People just don't afford the money to do it. And it takes a lot of time. So, uh, but I want to come over and pull the camera and show you this. You get used to how they swing and you just sort of, you know, the world doesn't make any difference. This is, this is where it's at, it's really cool, okay? And so um, the biggest thing is having great foundation points. And when you work from the same two or three points a lot, you will become really, really accustomed to what happens in relationship to that point when you swing something. As to how high you are, if you're on a, a flat surface up on top, if you're on a surface on the side, you will, you will, you will have a better understanding or a better relationship with that point and how radii from one point to the other interact. Now, as far as the ones up on top, what'll happen, like I said, you know, we have duplicate measurements. You know, we'll, we'll do the top third, whatever, you know, up to, you know, around, we'll go up to about here on her. We'll point up to the top of her fingers or hands or whatever, and not mess with her head or her neck. We'll get up into here, and we'll have these points, and this will be long, and this will be short. And then you basically just reverse those dimensions. Um, because when you start measuring down near the bottom, that's going to be short, and this is going to be long. And so we'll put this all together. And it, But it, the more you do it, it just kind of you get into this, 
just groove with it, just flow it. It's just swing of the compass is great, man. So, uh, and uh, but come look at this. Let me show you these lines. Okay, you can see how much closer they are together versus where they were before. And this line, can you see how much this line has moved forward in that direction? See, right here. See, it's moved that much. And this line was back here. And it's moved forward as well. It's harder to see on here because I've got this cut out sort of as a, as a concave. Um, but you can see it a lot better in person. But because of the way the little dish is cut, you can see how this one advanced. You know, that's a strong 3 16ths of an inch. You move that much just in that, you know, take it off about the same on top. Because this is a shorter radii. It's below, and so it moves really quick. Alright? Do a little bit more shoot. Take a look at this. See how much closer those are? That's how much it moved. We'll take just a tiny bit more and we'll shoot that one. A little bit more depth. See how close that is? We'll shoot a point and see how it moves. interior edge of her cuff, the end of her sleeve. So we'll have this line down here that will work. I'll shoot this point next. We'll be able to contour that over as well. And we'll have that cuff started. Now, I don't want to cut the top of it off and sink it down. I don't want to cut the bottom of it off and sink it down because I want to be able to shift it just a little bit when we stand her up. When we stand her up, you're going to have a different evaluation. So we'll... Uh, We'll see. As you're doing this work, you're going to make mistakes, okay? And they're not, I mean, you're not trying to make mistakes, okay? Just want to uh, bring this up while I'm working on points. There's going to be points that are perfect. I want everyone to be perfect, everyone to be exactly where it needs to be. And I want to be especially careful. Hey, it's weird because you're trying to be really careful, you really pay attention and you overthink it and you shoot a little deep. It's not what you wanted it to be. Uh, whether it's because you, you had a caliper that was wrong and you didn't catch it or whatever. And that points a little bit off, okay? As long as you didn't shoot a hole six inches deep somewhere, and really cause a huge disaster. Don't get too stressed out about it. Um, and, you know, realize, like I said, stone's gonna teach me how stupid I am because the stone wins every time. It just sits there and it proves to be the perfect obstacle uh, between my ego and the stone. You know, I, I'm way down on the totem pole, okay? Um, but you can do perfect, shoot the whole thing perfect. Absolutely shoot the whole thing, just 
never miss a point. Everything's great. And then you're working along, you're doing a fold, and it falls off. Because you checked it. Because you traced a line on between details or whatever, you know, with the chisel, instead of shaping down to it, you went back and forth on that one straight line, and you created a stress riser, created a crack. Just like we do when we're trying to break something, and I'll go in and I'll mark it up, and then bang, hit it once, it comes right off. It was the same thing when you're carving. And what that means in, in this context of this discussion, what that means is that you could do a perfect job pointing this whole thing out with the enlargement. The enlargement's a lot different than pointing with a point machine. You can be spot on the money with that. And you're swinging your points and you got a point that's a little bit deep or it's beside something or whatever. It goes back to what I talked about not surrendering volume, okay? Don't just hog everything off way down to every point the second you can. You know, if I'm down in the neighborhood getting things shaped up, but I could have a point that's a little bit off and maybe I've got to shift that piece of drapery a little bit or that, that lock of hair a little bit. Um, and as long as it isn't drastic, you know, and I mean inches, I mean like, you know, you take off this much stone when you're only supposed to take off the end of your pinky. Um, you're gonna have to learn to be able to fix those things because you could have a stone, a piece of stone that has a flaw in it. You know, if you're doing marble, you got inclusions, man, and they can pop up anywhere. Man. You can have all this work in the job, and all of a sudden you open up this big old piece of junk in that stone, it ain't going away. It's going to be there. And there's a pretty good chance that the more you scrub on it to clean it up, the bigger it's going to get. That's marble. Okay? You can all the virtues you can talk about marble and how perfect it is, it'll have an inclusion in it and it'll bite your butt. That's just the way it goes. Granite can have inclusions as well. You know, some stone, like the Georgia stone, is more apt to have inclusions than a, than a Vermont granite. You never get inclusions like that in Vermont. You just don't see them. Um, but in, in Georgia, you know, it's, it's a lot more common. And they might be white or black, or they may be a line. You never know what it's going to be. But you're going to have to learn to fix that stuff and compensate. And that's the point. If you have something where you've got a little deep, you're going to have to be able to fix that. Just like you're going to have to be able to fix something if you run into a problem carving, whether it's the stone, it's probably going to be you. You're probably going to hit something, lean on it the wrong way, Forget the grain's going right there, and you're just going to lose the end off something or the side off something. It's just going to come apart. So don't don't have a panic attack and throw the stone away just because you think you're a little deep somewhere. Put it all together. You know, go make an effort not to make anything catastrophic. But little minor variations. You know, you're probably going to have to run into. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to fix it when you're just carving it. So when you're pointing it, it's the same deal. All right. Back to work. Okay, we're going to shoot this point on her shoulder. Just there's a, you know, point right on the top of her shoulder. We're going to get that done. And these you see these three lines here. Just a little bit. Yeah, I think that's better. You see these three lines. Now, they don't cross very well. Okay, but we understand as they come in, this one here is from the bottom. That's the long one. That's not going to move a lot because it's a long radius. Okay, this one's the shortest radius of the bunch, and this is going to come down to where it isn't quite down flat to the back, but it's going to come down. So this line will move a lot. This one right here is going to come this direction quite a bit. And then this swipe here is from the side, and it's part of it. But what we got to do is you, as you cut into this, you got to remember what's going to move and what you've got to have for uh, basically what you got to have for clearance. And because we know that this line isn't really going to move, we don't really have to worry about a lot of this material up in here. But this can't advance. If we cut it over here, does that make sense? 
and this can advance if you cut it over here. We've got to cut a hole in this line. We've got to cut a hole in this line, basically so there's clearance. So when we come over with our compass, it can go somewhere. Because if we don't cut away in here, this was, you can see it advances, you know, quite a bit. It goes forward. We're going to go down in this, it's a little bit taller, so we're going to be down in this area. And this line's going to be advanced, you know, just showing from here, it, it advances at least almost half an inch. This one will probably advance even more. So that helps give you an idea. You're going to make, if you're going to bugger something up, you're going to do it when you go to a brand new area. And so that's why if you work in areas where you, you know, put things together, you can just kind of move along with them. And I want to start opening this up. You should be able to push this back and it shouldn't be too dangerous. So let's give it a shot and see how it looks. Okay, look at this just so you can understand how these lines move. Now, I'm about an inch deep straight down an inch. And that inch, this one from her head, look at how far it travels. It swipes down like this. So we've advanced almost an inch. This one's not moving as much because it's a little bit longer. Okay? And it's also closer to being level already. This one's still got this one's still got to go down and go travel on. I left this is the original swipe. Original swipe, original swipe. You can see this one's not really going to move. Our, our intersection is going to be over in this area here. This will advance. I don't know. This is advancing three times, three or four times as much as this one is. So this will travel over here, and we'll probably be in this area. So. I wanted to show you that. I'm going to cut this off so I've got good access and I'll just be able to go down slow and approach that and that'll be a point on her shoulder. We can cut through this whole side. Line. This is the function of a ripper. Is you can be able to cut a very square line, straight line. You can evacuate a bunch of stone without having to take it out every little piece with a nine point. You make a channel, so it'll go around and you can pop it right out. to it. I wanted to show you, you know, just if you cut a little slot with it, 
the ripper. You know, I use the nine point and these two rippers to go down straight and inch right there. Just cut it right down. Go right down there and cut it. See where I want it to be, and now I'm clear, open it up just so I can get to it. Or I got a point here on her shoulder, so I know pretty close to where I need to be. But we're going to shoot this one. We know it's below her, her arm up here. These other points on her on her forearm. So we should, we'll check this here in just a minute. I'll level that off, and we'll check it. And uh, that looks pretty good. It's getting close gone down a couple inches. We still have to have her whole head. This is the front of her shoulder. So this is going to be way down, you know, in the actual background is way here. So that's still up several inches. So it looks deep. You're going to have deep points like this. you got to get your process together and trust it. Just a little bit more. It's happening really fast right now. I think we're almost there. There it is. Compass and this compass laid right on top of each other, almost perfect. And uh, they cross and just barely go away from each other because they're just not quite in the line. But, uh, and this will work great. So I think that's pretty good. Now we've got her shoulder, top of her shoulder. This is right on top of her shoulder. got this and this is how much it goes up. You see this is still, this is the background here. This is that, that you know, eight inch dot behind it. So this is still several inches above. She's still got great volume. It's going to look weird while you're putting it together until you understand the way it looks. Just keep working and keep trusting. You know, I can work this off some. I'm going to work this up here and uh, try to, uh, you know, just keep making progress. I wanted to add this in, okay? This is my uh, public service announcement or my rant and rave or whatever. I really hope y'all are paying attention to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, especially how I'm holding my hand machines. I'm doing all this rough out work. I'm doing all this finish work, fine work, everything I do. And I never have a death grip on these tools, okay? Go back and look at how I'm running, like, when I'm using the rippers to open this up. And I'm not holding on to this like I'm going to fall off a cliff or that I've got to crush it. And it doesn't matter whether I'm using a big machine or a little machine. I'm just controlling it. Most of these things, it's you'll generally not see me with all my hands around unless I'm running a nine point and just back and forth. And that's so I can just relax and let it go. It isn't that I'm squeezing the machine because I can really squeeze a machine. I got, I got the guns to do it. Um, so are my hands wrecked? Oh, yeah. God, my, my nerve damage and whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you about that. Um, but there's only so much of this that you can do. And, and come out unscathed. You're gonna have, there's a cost to doing everything. And I, I think it's nuts when I see all these people walking around and they got braces on both knees and they're playing basketball. Dude, man, wow, no, no, I ain't doing that. But you know, I mean, pick your poison, whatever you wanna do. If you're gonna carve stone, chill out. I know you can get the anti-vibration gloves and people swear by them and whatever, but so many of those people you see, you put on those anti-vibration gloves and now you can't handle, you can't control the machine, and so you've got to squeeze the machine tighter in order to not have it flare it out of your hand or drop it. So are you saving any injury to your hand? I, 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 it's probably negligible. You know, there's a, there's a, um, sure there's a lot of placebo effect involved because you can't prove that they actually save your hands without undoing it and going back and doing it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you can have statistically, you know, um, statistically accurate results. You know, the, the data is just, you know, it's, it can't prove cause and effect. It can, it can demonstrate it, but it can't prove it. And those differences is in words. 
Learn to relax while you're holding your tools. You don't have to squeeze them to death. You look at how many times I'm holding stuff and I've got one or two fingers loose and I've got one or two fingers loose. I'm not holding like this and I'm not holding like this. I'm more apt. If I've got a, if I really got a muscle into that tool, you'll see me come out on the back and push. Even if I'm pushing with my shoulder, with my body, that's how I make this tool effective. Not by squeezing it. Okay. Quit squeezing your hand machine. Chill out. Let the machine do the work because you can't, you can't squeeze this machine to make it do a better job. All right. <laughs> Back to your previously scheduled programming. <laughs> well, that's probably going to make it for this video. Uh, I think we've got enough content on here to fill up this next one. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how this looks and put it on the internet. But I uh, hope this makes sense. I, I think I like the way it's swiping better on this other triangle. It's a little easier to see. Um, you know, it, it could be easier to see, but um, I like being able to, to mark a cross on it because it's kind of like marking things off. Um, you can you can do that with your with your on the other triangle, like you can mark it with a pencil. But after you mark a certain number of them, the pencil just kind of blurs in, and you end up, you know. So, and I'm sure it'll happen on this one. But so far, it's working good. But this is about right. Because of have, looking at her, this is quite a bit below, and then we her head is up anyway, so this is going to drop even more. So this is a really good pro <coughs> projection from the top of her shoulder to her to her forearm, and so we'll be able to clear this off. We've got to be able to get down to shoot where basically where her nipples would be, because that's where we're going to index the pointing machine. We're going to go top of the head. We're going to go two head lengths down, and we should be able to put her together like that and it'll set right up and be great so that's what we're going to do thinking towards the future my name is clint button i'm a granite sculptor here at carolina sculpture studio with the virtual stone carving apprenticeship thanks for coming in